everyone welcome back to cybersecurity tv today we're going to talk about the server side javascript injection vulnerability this is way different than cross site scripting any form of cross site scripting or any form of injection attacks uh, so today i'm going to walk you through what is the vulnerability why it exists how do you discover this vulnerability and how do you exploit at the end i'll also give you a little homework where, which you can try and and do it by yourself on this one of the vulnerable application it's very straightforward uh, so let's get into it if you haven't hit the thumbs up button yet uh, please do it that's gonna help me in the uh, YouTube algorithm and let's get started so uh, JavaScript is pretty common language like whoever wants to get into the penetration testing I tell them okay learn JavaScript learn Python which is very basic right and, and every you, you would need that every now and then now the thing is uh, earlier we, we used to say like JavaScript is only easy only used for uh, client-side scripting uh, but it's not the case anymore we are using increasingly used uh, via JSON which is uh, like you know a query language so uh, server send the request in the JSON form and get the response then you ha also have like uh, JavaScript being used in the database language uh, which is like NoSQL is one of the example which we saw like in one of our earlier uh, uh, like video how do we exploit the NoSQL database right so uh, now and and one of the example of uh, JavaScript use being used on the server side is Node.js so it's used as a backend programming language so you could have the entire application uh, built using the uh, JavaScript like front-end and back-end and, and good thing with the uh, like you know Node.js or, or JavaScript in general is it's asynchronous and non-blocking so uh, that's why a lot of uh, modern frameworks and application prefers that now what is server-side JavaScript injection now imagine uh, like you know any any particular uh, function uh, which is taking the user input and then evaluating so whenever the user input is be being evaluated using the eval function uh, that's where you have a possibility of doing the server-side JavaScript injection lot of modern applications are using node.js Node right uh, as of today so of course there is there is quite a possibility that one is using that and that's why whenever uh, so for for example in here uh, request is the node.js object uh, like express request object so express sorry yeah i forgot to mention that so uh, although node.js is a server side like in programming language a lot of uh, developers use the express on top of it so you can think of it as a flask being used on python right so express uh, they use the express so request is the object of the express uh, whatever the user input you have in the like you know body contains the user input which is then subsequently uh, processed by the eval so here if you want to inject something uh, as an attacker what you do is you terminate the current request and you open up a new request object and that's where you put the payload so we'll, we'll see an example actually working example on this uh, how this actually can be done uh, but just to give you an idea what is the server set injection now the payload uh, is like you know appropriate js request so uh, this is like you know going to be a, a super common like a javascript request then you have you're gonna use the uh, request dot end uh, as I said like this the uh, express object in the node.js and then you put the whatever the string you want to put so this will actually end the request of the current uh, like whatever the process going on and, and insert a string here so that way you can verify whether your string it's like script alert script right so your string is actually being injected to the server or not uh, the another example like once you confirm that then you can go a little further and here as you can see it says request dot end so of course you ended the existing requ request the required this is the file system then you are read uh, reading the directory sync and then you are converting it to two string because uh, of course this is like you cannot directly read the output of this uh, function so you convert to two string and then read that as well we're gonna also use this uh, payload in one of our exploit today uh, the uh, further payloads you can use like you know process.cwd uh, you can also have process.version cwd will give you current working directory version will give you the node.js version the architect will give you like you know 64-bit arm and the file name will give you uh, what is the js file it's running and this is the tool uh, jsgen.py is the homework for you guys like 
to uh, figure out how do you run that uh, actually let me give you a little hint so when you run that uh, use the reverse attribute it's gonna give you a string you can use that string to get the complete remote code execution or reverse shell on the remote system so try that out on the demo system we're gonna uh, try our exploit today and let me know if you get succeed uh, and and this this actually script also gives you uh, like you know a, a really helpful in obfuscation and, and filter bypass so I know I did a lot of talking uh, let's let's actually see the demo of how does the exploit work so you guys can figure it out and and like you know uh, get a good into uh, whenever you see the node.js or, or uh, js being used on the server side uh, so this is the js gen.py i was talking about so just uh, as simple as like you just download this file uh, of course you have python running so execute this file using the python use the reverse attribute oh, sorry yeah, use the reverse attribute you can also configure like which iptc port you know you need the reverse shell then of course you're gonna you have to use the netcat uh, to capture the shell and then uh, pretty much you can do all run all the commands that you that you want uh, so this is going to be your homework so let me know uh, if you have trouble finishing it maybe i'll, I'll do another video and explaining it but uh, hopefully somebody will be able to crack it uh, and I've also put the link in the description for the JS uh, gen uh, .py. All right, so this is the application we're gonna use. Uh, you can directly hit this application. This is actually by OWASP, so uh, should not be uh, like there should not be any concern over uh, getting it. Only thing you need to do is you need to uh, sign up here, so you can log into the app. I have already signed up, so I'm just gonna uh, put the username and password. okay cool so this is just a normal node.js application and uh, you can play around and, and find so many vulnerabilities that you want but the simple uh, thing we want to uh, try out here is server set uh, sorry javascript injection vulnerability so as you can see here uh, this takes like you know uh, contribution type employee pretext roth and after tax uh, let me just try to set to five and it says here five percent right now one thing uh, which i have uh, i'm also gonna use in the template injection um, exploitation like discovery method is you can try the math so suppose three plus three if this is something evaluated that means uh, it's possible that yeah so as you can see it's six here that means it's possible for you to inject uh, arbitrary value into the javascript now let's try uh, with the task string that we were talking about. So first off, I'm gonna end the current uh, request and then I'll say test cyber security demo and submit. Okay, so that, that means our, our, our actual string is being uh, demonstrated here, which is good. So now next, what we can do is as I said, you can also have the current working directory you can find that out so let's do that uh, process dot cwd uh, let's see oops oh i forgot I should not have the single quotes here okay okay so this is installing the app directory that's obvious now let's try to read the uh, like you know uh, all the directories so what I'm gonna do is require file system FS this is the same payload which we saw a little bit earlier uh, read uh, directory sync thing then uh okay so as you know uh, javascript is case sensitive so make sure uh, you have the exact case uppercase lowercase otherwise it's not gonna work okay so here it tells you all this all the directories it's running on the server uh, which is good now let's go forward and let's try to read the environment variables uh, for that i need child process and 
then let's do environment variables that we want and here we need to use another function which is executive string dot to string okay this should work okay so here we've got all the environment variables set by the application right so these are some of the simple exploits uh, you can obviously run and and play around there are also so many vulnerabilities in these applications you can also do stuff like cross site scripting you can uh, also use burp to fi figure out like more vulnerabilities so you can play around as much as you want but the main goal of uh, like i wanted to uh, show you guys is like how do you perform the server side uh, javascript injection in the node.js application so whenever you come across like uh, the the developers are using node.js uh, keep in mind again the easiest way to uh, probably exploit or find out about these issues are you can use like certain payloads like this you can compile into a, a text file and and load it into the burp intruder every time you have such node.js application and you fire that across all the requests and and see if anything uh, shows up uh, that will be a quick and easy and automated way uh, to find out of course there are so many auto like scanners out there but none of like of course none of the scanner is going to be as perfect as the manual pen test so you do want to uh, test it out at least the sample uh, parameters whenever you can uh, yeah, so that's it. I want to discuss in this video. Uh, please hit the thumbs up button if you haven't already. Subscribe to my channel for weekly episodes. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.